If you're an entrepreneur or you're starting your own business, you probably can't remember the last time that you worked 9 until 5 p.m. Well, I think that that is really the curse of all entrepreneurs out there on the planet today, but it doesn't have to be. My next guest is author Davin Michaels, and he's here to give us some strategies so that we can find more time and have more fun as an entrepreneur. Davin, thanks for being here. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for having me, Kristen. So why are we working so hard? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a very good question. Uh, you know, today there is more on the entrepreneur's plate than there ever has been in the history of mankind, and that's for two reasons, really. One is because of technology, we can now be the one man or one woman band in our business, right? We can do everything. There's so much we can do. And at the same time, it used to be where we worked in office situations. Today, so many of us work from home, so you have less help than you've ever had. And now this creates a perfect storm where people are really struggling to just find time. You know, and, and there's a cost to that. I mean, so many people, they have families, but they're so busy working in their business that they're really missing out on that family time and that quality of life. So I know you're an expert in this. You, mm -hmm. you have a new book that's coming out. I do, yes. My new book, uh, Outsource Smart. Outsource Smart. So how do we outsource ourselves intelligently? Well, uh, absolutely. <laughs> that's a very good <laughs> question as well. Um, you know, we are in uh, what's called sort of outsourcing 2.0. That's, that's a uh, term that uh, has been coined for this uh, phase of, of the evolution of outsourcing. Um, it started with large corporations outsourcing and now small businesses are doing it and they're uh, having incredible success. And we find that so many people don't know exactly where to begin. We know that a lot of small business owners, they want to outsource, but they just don't know where to get started. And our goal is to focus on the IGAs in a business, the income generating activities. Now, Kristen, you're an entrepreneur, and there's probably, I'm sure you agree with me, there's about 1,000 tasks every day we can do in our business, yes? Or 2,000. Or 2,000, <laughs> absolutely, for sure. Um, but only a small handful that generate immediate bottom line results in our business. Would you agree? Absolutely. Okay. So as an exercise, what I do is I have people uh, make a list. Uh, and so what I do is I have them pull out a blank sheet of paper, put a line down the middle. On the left-hand side, I have them make a list of all of their tasks in their business, just a, a brain dump of all their tasks. Mm -hmm. On the right-hand side, I have them list their income-generating activities, the activities that generate immediate income, bottom line results in their business. Now, the next thing I tell them to do is I say, circle everything that you feel can be outsourced. And they generally you know, circle a whole bunch of stuff on the left and a few on the right, because most people think that they can't be replaced in their business, right? Um, but then I say, step back for a minute, and and if you had, let's say, 30 days to really train somebody to do a brain dump, give them all that you have, then what could you outsource and circle those? And people are really astonished by what they find. Uh, and it's all about systems and processes. Well, I was just going to say, you know, as I'm listening to you, I think business owners and entrepreneurs, you know, it's all in our head. Oh, of course. Like, oh, yes, we have to do this, we have to do that. Yes. Sometimes we feel like we don't even have the time to make that to-do list, yeah. much less train that's true. Another person. So what's the cost, Devin? What's the cost of not <laughs> training someone to come in and, and help us kind of pick up what's falling off yeah, absolutely. our to-do list? Well, there's a huge cost. And, and Chris and I always tell people, I say, listen, you, you do have to take one step back to take two steps forward. But it's this, this is what will set you free. You see, so many people, um, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, you figure you can do it better than anybody else. Or there may be tasks that come across your desk that might only take, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a few minutes to handle, but that is really the trap because they, as you know, a few minutes turns into a few hours and then your day is gone. You start checking your email and your day is gone. And there's a huge cost. There's a cost to your bottom line. There's a cost to your peace of mind. There's a cost to you know your, your friends and your family and your life. You know, we're only here for a short lifetime and why not make it count, make it profitable, but have fun along the way. So as an entrepreneur, how many hours per week do we need to work to be successful? Well, you know, that's really a choice. And, and everybody has their own definition of success. I do have friends that successfully outsource and they work about 10 hours a week. You know, there's sort of this uh, perception of me as being sort of a Tim Ferriss, four hour work week kind of guy. The reality is, I work very hard. But the shift that's taken place for me in my life is that I only work on today what I'm absolutely passionate about. And everything else is outsourced. So, what I get to do is I get to travel all over the world, I get to make music, I get to speak on stages, I get to see the world. And this is what I've always wanted to do. And I'm living an incredible life and it's really due to the fact that I've learned to leverage.
Yeah, you're not afraid to kind of give up that control. Now, is outsourcing work for control freaks? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you do have to relinquish mm -hmm. some control. And one thing that you have to sort of let go of is um, I'm a perfectionist. But I realize that nobody is, is embodies perfection the way I do in my business. And so mm -hmm. nobody's going to be as perfect as I am. But you know what? I'll settle for 90 to 95 percent. And I've got some great people on my team. They were not created overnight. They were actually created. It takes time. But it was well worth the investment. And today, you know, I have a finely oiled machine that, that, that works. So how many people would you say the average entrepreneur needs on a team to take care of just those tasks to keep going through their business? Sure. Well, first of all, it starts with one. Okay, <laughs> and that's really the first step. And for a lot of people, they may not even need anybody full time. They could go part time, and there's a lot of different options. You know, you can find freelancers on Elance and Craigslist. And then when you get to a certain point where you actually want to manage facility, you can look at managed facilities. Like my company's one, two, three employee, but you know, any company out there that that's good can help out as well. And those are sort of the steps. And then from there, you can have you know build and so on and so forth. The cool thing is, is that you get your first person up and running, and then remember that new person person can train the next person and the next person and the next the person. The domino effect. Exactly. So it starts with one. And actually, we call it the ripple effect. But, oh, uh, the ripple effect. <laughs> we love that. The ripple yes. effect. So inside Outsource Smart, mm -hmm. now I understand that you use um, a community of people inside the Philippines to help provide uh, administrative assistance support and other types of support. How does that work? I mean, they're on the other side of the world. Mm. Yeah, well, um, my company, at my company, we have several hundred employees. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of challenges in my business, but believe it or not, managing people is not our biggest challenge. Uh, there are plenty of other challenges <laughs> every single day, but um, it's all about systems. You know, a few years ago, um, I brought on my first C level executive, our VP, Bajal Palmer, and that really changed everything for us. Uh, he's great at processes, and we've managed to use that to leverage our business as well. And as a result, uh, it's possible. You know, we have managers over there. There, and we have managers in the U.S. as well, and and it works. It works, and it, believe it or not, it's not it's not that tough. So, what's the process, Devin? Let's say I'm sitting at home. I'm tired of trying to do everything. I'm fed up. I want to actually take a vacation with my partner or my kids. I've had it. Yeah. How do I get started? Okay. So the first step is we've made the list. Now we need to decide really, you know, what is going to generate income for us. Because I always say start with the income. Uh, I'm very marketing centric. So if you can get your virtual employees to pay for themselves, we call this outsourcing ROI, hmm. then this is really key. So start with the tasks that make you money and then start with the tasks and then uh, follow up with the tasks that save you time. So that, those are sort of the, the, the way you go. And then in practical terms, uh, the easiest way to train, I find today we're all so busy, and what happens quite often is that entrepreneurs get uh, too busy to manage, and we want to try to avoid that. Yeah, That happens? That happens all the time. <laughs> too it busy is, to manage. It is a curse, yeah. And so the best way around it, and there is no perfect way, but the best way is screen capture videos. So what I do is if I have a new process that I want to do, maybe it's setting up an email, and an email program or something like that, I turn on my computer and I start recording my screen. Uh, and there's a lot of different ways to do that. For Windows users, there's Camtasia. It's very popular. You can get a free copy of it for 30 days at Camtasia.com. For Mac users, my favorite is QuickTime. It records. It's fantastic. There's also ScreenFlow. There's a lot of mm -hmm. different options for that. And that's the best way to do it. Um, the most detailed way to do it is to document everything, but it's just too time consuming. Oh, it's who has too, time to do too that? too time consuming. That makes me tired just thinking yeah, about that. Exactly. So yeah. video is the way to go. And it's awesome. And then what's great is, let's face it, uh, you may have somebody that's fantastic, an outsourced virtual assistant that you love, and then you may lose them. But if you have these video trainings on file, mm -hmm. then you have a training system. You're like McDonald's, right? You have a system. And you bring in the next person, they watch the videos, and they, they get up to speed, and now you're back in business again. You know, I've heard the, I've heard the saying before that systems free you. Absolutely. It's all about systems. <laughs> and I think when you want to grow your business, if you can create a system for anything, yeah. And then hand that system to someone else. That's when you're taking that business to the next level. Absolutely, the next level. That's when everything starts to happen. That's where all the magic is. That's when you go from being a uh, having a job at your mm -hmm. own company right. to actually running your business. Yeah, a job working for yourself. That's it. That's it. And it's huge. It's huge. So talk to me a little bit about the book. You know, mm -hmm. it says, "How do you have more free time and do what you love?" Yeah. Um, where is that balance point? inside that. You know, what if you're having too much free time and your business isn't growing? I mean, I know that sounds crazy, but that's yeah. a fear. That's yeah. a fear. Yeah, totally. Um, I know before I outsourced and delegated that when I would take time away from my business, 
dollars would start going down, revenue would start going down. But if you have leverage on your business, you have outsourced assistance, then that's not going to happen. As long as you're doing everything properly, your business will grow. We've had triple digit growth in our business for several years now, and that's with me traveling all over the world having a blast. And that's really why I wrote the book, because I have to tell you, I've been self-employed for nearly three decades, and I'm, I feel um, very fortunate. You're a pro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I feel, I feel very fortunate that I've been able to live the life I've lived, but it hasn't been until really the last you know, four or five years in, in my business life where I really found true nirvana. And I absolutely love it. And I want to share that with people. And you know, I shoot videos from all over the world. We share it with our followers all over the world. And we, we get so much feedback. And people say, I want your life. I want to do that. And I was like, OK, great. Well, I'm going to write a book and show you how to do it. And that's exactly what I've done in Outsource Smart. Yeah, I think for entrepreneurs, and I can say for you know, myself, I remember several years back, you know, when you're getting started in that business, you have that vacation fear, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. fear of stepping away, fear of letting go, fear mm -hmm. of not being available 24-7. Yeah. And actually, that type of mentality holds you back. Oh, absolutely. You know, because you can't see the bigger vision, you can't see the bigger picture. Yep. You're not able to use your creativity in a way that lets you see the solutions because you're just in the trenches. Yeah, absolutely. If you can find yourself good people and then you know, give them some freedom to, to actually perform as opposed to you know, taking their responsibilities and doing them yourself, then you'll see some amazing things. And that's what's been so great for me. As a matter of fact, when I started to relinquish that kind of control to my people, they actually began to take the ball and run with it. And they, you know, I've always said that, that my strength is really the people I surround myself with. I surround myself with amazing people. We have amazing people at our company, and that's just grown our company exponentially. Let's talk about your uh, team that's down in the Philippines. Sure. Now, I know that an interesting phenomenon is happening down there, mm. whereas originally they're the support staff for entrepreneurs here. Mm -hmm. But now what's happening down there? Well, uh, how do you mean? So the entrepreneur They're becoming entrepreneurs. Yes, 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 absolutely, yes. Uh, it's interesting. For so many years, they really uh, weren't entrepreneurial, but now, you know, they're starting to get the bug. You know, once you get that bug, you can't get away from it. As a matter of fact, we've created a program at our company uh, that we're just getting ready to implement right now. It's called Employed Entrepreneur because there's two things we want to do at our company. One is we want to retain great talent, but at the same time, you know, we want to help them become successful in their lives as well. And we know that they are entrepreneurial also, or at least they're starting to be. So we have a program that we're about to launch where if they stay with us for a year and they take a course during that year, then at the end of the year, they can actually submit their business plan. And if we approve the plan, then we'll actually finance their business. So it's like microfinancing. Wow. Yeah, we're pretty excited about it. Talk to me a little bit about the Philippines. Mm -hmm. now, what's going on in that community and why are they such a great pool of individuals to support Western business owners? Well, absolutely. The Philippines is unlike any uh, Southeast Asian um, uh, country. It's amazing. It's so Westernized. They love Americans. They speak great English. It's a, it's a close run up to their first language. Uh, everybody speaks it. And if you crack a joke, they crack one right back at you. And there's so many Filipinos in the U.S. as well. So it's a great place to set up shop. But what's really cool is for the very first time in history, there's a burgeoning middle class in the Philippines. And it's all due to the call center industry. And as a result, they're, they're, they're making quite a bit more money. They're starting to come up. And it is just really amazing to watch. And we estimate for every employee that we employ, we probably feed another three or four. And we're also involved in a lot of community service in the Philippines as well. So it's not only is it transforming and giving entrepreneurs in the U.S. freedom, but it sounds like there's a level of freedom that's happening in that country as well. Absolutely. And it's creating entrepreneurs. And uh, it's creating a lot of business in the Philippines as well. Yeah. And so. Inside your book, Outsource Smart, and congratulations on that. Thank you. So I hear it's destined to be a bestseller. Well, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's looking good. What would you say are the top two or three strategies that someone who's watching can say, I'm going to do that right now? Mm, okay, sure, great. Well, one of the things that uh, I do in my business is uh, I create a lot of software applications because at our company, we want to uh, make our employees and then our clients more profitable mm -hmm. and, uh, and more productive. And so one of the things we do is uh, we create a lot of data mining applications, which actually do research and then create lists for us. And then we use those lists to market to in our business. And uh, this has been very successful. 
successful for us uh, as it's also been successful for so many of our uh, clients as well. In addition to that, another thing that we focus on is video marketing. So I travel all over the world, but whenever I'm traveling, I shoot uh, informational videos. Just, just a quickies. little one like this one. Yeah, yeah just, <laughs> just short little videos. Uh, and then our virtual assistants get those videos out all over the web. We released a video the other day that we shot uh, called Outsourcing Style, and uh, we had over 200,000 views in about 10 days, which is really cool. Let's take a look at that one right now. Okay. Okay, I heard about this one. Let's take a quick look at right. it. Angels, how do we get our message out to the world that we're the number one outsourcing center in the Philippines? Got it. Outsourcing style. Outsourcing style. Outsourcing style. Outsourcing style. Hey, wait a minute. You're in the wrong video. Outsourcing style. 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 Who are those people in that video? <laughs> that is so much fun. It was super fun. And we actually shot that at the 123 Employee Campus, too. We have three campuses in the Philippines. And uh, my, our VP, Bijal Palmer, came up with the idea literally about a week before I left for the Philippines. I said, okay, sure. And then the day I arrived, we were supposed to shoot the next day. I didn't know. I thought it was the following day. Now, 75% of our employees come in around midnight, work till 9.30 in the morning because we have to match the time zone in the U.S., which is where 75% of our clients reside. Uh, so I didn't know we were going to shoot it. Uh, about 3 a.m., they told me that I had to learn the dance moves. So in 10 <laughs> minutes, I learned the dance moves. Uh, we were shooting in the facility. By 6 a.m., we were in the street. And then we had to wrap it up by 8 o'clock because, 8 in the morning, because we had the street closed and it gets very uh, hot in the morning in the Philippines. But by 8 a.m., we had it wrapped up. It was a five-hour shoot How fun. and it was it was a blast and just to sort of wrap up that loop uh, it's a great way to generate more business by shooting videos and then taking those videos viral today we have about two and a half million views on our YouTube channel it's been great for the biz all right so video marketing yeah uh, data mining data mining and what's the third thing? Sure. Another one would be uh, article marketing. Article marketing is a great way to go so these are creating short content how-to articles are these something that you should write yourself if you have time. <laughs> and if you have time, but if you don't, you can have the outsourced virtual assistants write the articles in your voice. Once they're done, we post them to your blog. And then once they're on your blog, we go out to all the different thousands of article directories all over the web, and we share those articles there as well. And the net result is three things, really. One is more traffic. More eyeballs equals mm -hmm. more traffic. Uh, number two is uh, it's a credibility builder. And number three, social proof. Because today, if somebody's going to do business with you, they're going to check you out. And how are they going to do that? Google. Yeah, exactly. and so we want to make sure that uh, if if they pull up your name, that there's thousands of pages of expert testimonies. That you're everywhere. And articles, exactly, right. exactly. Devin Michaels, thank you so much. Author of the thank book you. Outsource Smart. I love how bright this cover is. It it's is super fun. It matches your blouse. Yes, yes. We planned it that <laughs> yes, way. Yes, we did. So I wish you all the luck in the world, and thank you for all these strategies. Thanks. Good.